Hi everyone, time to do another Darktable video. Um, for this video I'm going to be concentrating on the exposure uh, plugins for Darktable. So we'll just go through um, and cover all of the exposure plugins. Um, I'm going to start with uh, this image of this water lily that I took uh, during a wedding. I just spied this water lily and thought I'd grab a shot of it. Uh, it's taken at f4 with a 24 to 105 f4 L, and it's uh, shot at 105, so it's in the middle of a pond. And I was shooting the bride and everything, so I, it was just a grab shot uh, when I saw this beautiful lily in the pond next to where we were taking taking the shots of the bride. I mean, it's a, it's actually at this uh, Ensham Hall. This is uh, somewhere over here. Anyway, let's go back to our main image. Okay, so I said I was going to talk about the exposure modules a little bit. Uh, what I've done is I've gone and I've put them... Okay, I haven't put them in here. I will just quickly do that now and fast forward it. Okay, so um, if you can see what I did there, if you click on a module once so that it's highlighted, then it shows up in its respective group. If you click on it again, then you'll see this star appear, and that means it'll show up in the <coughs> specified by user I call this the favorites. So these are the plugins that uh, I consider to be global exposure sort of modules, so they affect the entire image. Um, if you want to see the shadows and highlights uh, plugin, for example, that has it has built into it a fairly explicit masking system, uh, as opposed to the general masking system. So I'm not going to cover it here because it doesn't really affect the entire image. So the first few plugins that I'm going to just show you are the fill light uh, plugin. So what this does is essentially just um, will brighten a certain area of the image based on. Um, the brightness of those areas. So if I put it in somewhere in the middle here and then I increase this, then I can inc brighten or darken the image. As you can see, it's a fairly harsh effect. You've got to be pretty um, careful with it. You've got to use a blending um, mode or, uh, or something to keep it fairly toned down. Um, and I can just quickly show you what it actually looks like on the level. So, not on the levels, on the tone curve. So, the way it actually works is it puts a Gaussian, um, so something like this. So, if you take the middle point and you just drag that up, you'll get pretty much the same effect as you will get for the, of the fill light. The only thing is that the tone curve gives you the option of scaling the chroma automatically, which fill light does not. So if you if we see here, if I put this onto manual and I drag this center point up, say a full stop, or even that may be even more than a stop, uh, then we can see that this effect, if I just, I'll turn off the fill light here. So this effect, if you look at this image and look at this um, histogram, and I turn this off, turn the fill light back on, make this plus a stop or something bit less than that somewhere. Okay, half a stop. We've got this fairly... Uh, 10 zones means the entire uh, tonal range. Then this and this... It's too much now. This and this look pretty much the same. And they're having pretty much the same effect. So, to be honest, I almost never use fill light because I find it more difficult to use. Um, I've got to imagine that Gaussian on the tone curve, um, whereas the tone curve itself is obviously a lot more explicit. Okay, so that's the fill light. The next one we have is levels, which, uh, as far as I'm concerned, is pretty much the same as exposure. It essentially allows you to set a black point and an exposure level. So if I reset this here and I go back to levels, you'll see that once I turn it on, we get a histogram here and we can set the white point or the exposure, sorry, the overall exposure by selecting this and the black point by selecting, moving this. All right, let me just turn the tone curve off. Okay, and we could also set the midpoint. Now, the, setting the midpoint is sort of equivalent to dragging this center point up or down or left or right. 
Okay. I mean, it's considered, it's the, the midpoint is considered essentially what they call gamma. So, but it's, you know, it's a nice easy module to use. The other cool thing that you can do with it is you can um, use these eyedroppers to select the, what you think should be the darkest point in the image, um, what you think should be the lightest point in the image, so here, and what you think should be the midpoint. Uh, let's say here. Okay, and that'll, that'll set that for you. Or let's say we want the uh, leaf to be the mid-tone of the image. Let's go on to the zone system now. So the zone system, the way it works is it will, let's turn this on. If you mouse over the area, you, it'll show you the area that you're going to affect if you drag anything. The very brightest point down to the darkest point. And Ansel Adams developed this system for work uh, with taking black and white photos. This is just an implementation of it. And I'm gonna go through this in a lot more detail when I do my black and white video, which I've been researching. But what I can do is I can equate these uh, zones to the tone curve again. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag this. Well, let's just pick, uh, let me just reset this. Let me just pick this one and let me drag this. Okay, so what's the, what this is doing, you can see, is it's lightening up the darkest zone in the image. Now, we can actually relate that to the tone curve if we... Let me turn off the zone system, close the more modules. What we can actually do is we can say, well, a tenth from the bottom, I'll just drag that up. And now I'll make the rest of the image linear. So this is having pretty much the same effect as the zone system is. Except we need this to be on auto. So we can see here immediately that the zone system does automatically scale the chroma, as does the tone curve. So we actually get a fairly similar result. So I've done it more here. So let's pull this back down. Something like here. Okay. So that looks pretty similar to that. And that's because they're having a similar effect. So the darkest zone is being stretched up and being and having extra exposure added to it, and the rest is being kept at a linear uh, curve. Now the base curve is related to your camera. So you can see here that there's various different base curves available. I never change this, but it's very similar to the tone curve. You can play with it if you like, but I just keep it on the one that Dark table recommends. And as for the exposure plugin, I've, I think I've definitely covered that before. All right, so let's go turn everything off and return to processing the image. So this is my original image. I'm going to turn on the warnings so I can see that I've already got some true black in the image. You can see that because the histogram is, uh, you know, it's not reaching the origin or the axis before it hits the edge, it's hitting the edge, which means that we've got some saturated blacks in our image. So I'm just going to boost the exposure of my image, but I don't want to boost it too much because you'll see when I boost the exposure a lot, you'll see that you start to lose the perception of detail in this flower, and the flower to me is the center of attention. But what I could do, let's say I want to uh, increase the exposure of the whole image, so I'm exposing for the leaves and things at the moment. So I'm going to boost this up down there. So how, yeah, okay. So that, that looks pretty nice. I think I like the, the way that the uh, leaves look now. But now that that's true, I've got my flower too bright. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work specifically on the flower and I'm going to use a parametric mask. Now I recommend that uh, if you're interested in the parametric mask, that you go and look at the Darktable website. Uh, we look at the user manual. Now it's conditional blending is where we're going, what we're going to be working with. And we're going to be using the parametric, um, parametric mask. 
So we're going to be using the lightness and we're going to say everything between a certain lightness we want to include in our mask is the basic um, idea. But I encourage you to come into the user manual and check it out if you want to see any more detail. But you can see here, you know, you can leave out something based on, let's say it's red or let's say it's brighter than the rest of the image or whatever. You can create a mask using that fact. So it's just another way, instead of drawing a mask, I can say I want everything brighter than a certain value to be affected by what I'm doing. So that's what I'm going to do here. Now what I can do, so I've created my parametric mask now, and I'm going to use this eyedropper tool to decide where I should, what I should include and what I should exclude. I'm going to work on the input. Essentially this um, input or output you can work on either, just choose one, uh, and one is before the effect has been applied and one is after the effect has been applied. So I find it's easier to work on the input because that doesn't change with the effect of the plugin that you're using. So let me just reset that back. But I want to select uh, this part of the image here. So I'm going to, well, first of all, I'm going to make the mask visible. We can see that I'm including far too much here. I want to exclude everything darker than a certain level. Okay, so we can see the mask coming in and out as I drag this to the right. So here, at this point, I'm now including only the brightest parts of the image, which is what I want to work on to in include uh, or reduce the exposure. So I'm going to turn that back off now. So now the effect of this module will only affect those, those yellow areas of the image that I've masked off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce the exposure of that to try and bring back the detail. Okay, so let's pull this right back down. I'll just demonstrate. If I pull this right down, you can see the areas of the image that I'm working on. All right, so let's reset that. Let's zoom in on the flower, and I'm going to pull back the exposure on the flower and watch the detail return. Okay, so that's starting to look pretty cool. Now, let's just, oops, let's turn that off. Let's just have a look up here and check that you can see that there's a, you know, fairly, it's fairly good actually, but sometimes you can get a bit of a weird edge happening on these sorts of masks. So it might be worth adding a little bit of blur just to make the edge of the mask a little bit smoother. You can see that having an effect on this, on this flower up here. So as I drag that to the right, it sort of just brings the transition between the area that I've masked off and the area that I haven't masked off, it makes it a little bit smoother. So I'll just pull that up a little bit and leave that as it is. So we now have quite a lot more detail in that flower. I mean, I've probably overdone things, so I'm just going to pull that up a little bit. Okay, that's starting to look good. Now the next thing I'm going to work, move on to actually is a new module that's just been introduced about a week ago, Contrast, Brightness and Saturation. Now, keep in mind, this module appeared a week ago uh, and things may change a lot with it. Obviously, this is under heavy development. But we can see here that this is similar to the sorts of easy to use sliders that you see in other applications. Traditionally, Darktable's been you know, exposed all of the technical side of uh, image editing. This plugin here gives you three really easy to use sliders to access various different parts. One that's unique is this contrast one here. So if I drag that to the right, that increases the contrast. If I drag it to the left, it decreases the contrast. Let's just push that up just a tiny bit. Now what I should say is it was possible to increase the contrast in images before this module existed. How did you do that? Well, you guessed it. You use the tone curve pull up the highlights and you drop the darks and you get the same effect. This S-shaped curve is your increasing contrast curve. Very common to see that else, elsewhere as well. Often it'll look a little bit more like this with a sort of more uh, to the left part in the darks. But anyway, oh the other thing I should mention is is dragging that slider to the left like this how does that look in the tone curve? Well, it looks like this. Straight curve, but the brights get darker and the darks get brighter, and that reduces the contrast in the image, if that makes sense. 
Okay, let's reset that now. So brightness, saturation, you know, these are, these are quite easy to use as well. I encourage you to check them out, but I've already done that using other tools. So I'm just going to pu push up the contrast a little bit and I'm going to uh, maybe go over to the equalizer and add a little bit of clarity as well. Contrast and clarity are pretty similar effects. They just look a little bit different. I like to add a little bit of both. So that's quite cool. Now I like, I'd like i like to brighten up the colors a little. We'll go to my favorite Velvia module, which is just a very simple module for increasing colors. There's no, there's no skin tone, so we can reduce the mid-tone bias. That'll affect the things that would have been skin, but we don't need to worry about them. What else would I like to do? I'm going to do a crop, I think. Uh, maybe square. Let's put the flowers on the rule of thirds a little bit. Double click on that to apply it. That looks quite good. I might, uh, might pull the crop up just a little more so that this little uh, leaf in the foreground is not too distracting. Maybe I'll just make the crop line up with this leaf over here or something. Yeah, we're starting to look good now. Okay, what else would I like to do? Um, let's have a look at a vignette. See if I see how this looks. Uh, yeah, it's not too bad. Let's reduce its scale. Uh, let's increase the fall off strength so that it's less obvious. Um, how is this looking? Yeah, okay, let's reduce. So I'm right clicked on that. I'm going to type zero, hit enter. There we go. I like to bring the saturation back up. I don't like to affect the saturation and I don't want it to be so much there either. So that's a little more subtle now. So we're bringing the attention into the foreground here. So now I'm thinking, why don't we, um, I'm just looking at this flower at the front here and I still, I'm not quite convinced that I've got all of the detail that I want to see in it. So. I'm just going to move over and let's do a different method for, um, I mean we did the parametric mask before, why don't I just apply a tone curve um, with a new instance and I'm going to draw a mask with the, uh, with the new brush tool. And so you know, this, this will just be a comparison that we can use. Uh, you can see how I'm doing this. Instead of using a parametric tool, I'm just drawing the drawing the mask over the top there. Zoom in a little. And let's just see what we can do to bring down that exposure, bring back a little bit more detail, make it look nice. Okay, now we're going to blur the edge just there so that um, it doesn't look too, too bad. Now that's looking quite good quite like that technique. It's basically, um, you know, like dodging burning. And let's just finish this off now. Uh, let's compress this so we can see that we didn't use any of these. So we just fixed the exposure, the tone curve across the whole image, and then we did a tone curve at the end with a drawn mask just to bring the final amount of detail out. So there's my final image. Hope you enjoyed. See you later.